So, Bobby, get, get here in the batter's mm -hmm. box. Come here with the audience. Come here. All, all you fans at home. This is one of the greatest clutch hitters of all time. I would say him and Reggie Jackson really defined October as like their playhouse. I want these people at home to understand what was in Poppy's head. In Minnesota, I want you to get in the batting stands and walk me through what you were thinking, whether that's doubts or whether that's hit the ball the other way or TK in the dugout screaming at you. What were you thinking? And then we're gonna step out and I'm, I'm gonna go to 2006 mm -hmm. and seven mm -hmm. when you were going off, Perfect. your mentality. So let's start with Minnesota. Papi, tú sabes que en, en Fox, con Bardia, mm. nosotros hacemos el A28 con yeah, Fernando. Sí. Y ya tú sabes. Entonces, vamos a hablar un chin de pelota, pero vamos a hablar un poco más de, tú sabes, cosas así de... Relax. Yeah, fun, oh, a little chilling. fun. Primero quiero hablar de la República Dominicana, porque tú sabes que esa es tu, la isla de nosotros, hey. eh, que nosotros amo, amamos. ¿Qué parte, si un tipo, somebody from from the States that hasn't been to DR, what can you tell them that you love the most about Dominican Republic? Look, Dominican Republic is the type of country, era. I mean, you were there, you were there not too long ago, and you saw the beauty and the nature of what we got going on down there. Like, Dominican Republic has so many beautiful places. Like, now, that I have been retired from baseball the past five years, I got to really know my country more than ever. Mm. Dominican Republic have places that I swear to God, you know, like people, people, the people in the Dominican, my family in the Dominican always be like, why don't you go worldwide, different places? Yeah. Why you always come back? And I'm like, the thing is that you don't know what you got until you lose it. Mm. You one. got have no idea what you got to have here. That's why I keep on coming back. I the Dominican that. Republic have places, bro, that once I get there, I be like, is this for real? Like, like, coño, pero. Give us one place if you're out there in Boston or New York that somebody should visit that they haven't visited. Like I love Samana, for example. The Samana beach is, unbelievable. is incredible. And then you go to, to Punta Cana, and then you go to deeper in the south, Barahona, Bahia Las Aguila. Mm. Uh, bro, Dominican have places, man. Uh, Cabrera. Yeah, Cabrera. Cabrera have beautiful places. Uh, uh, you go to Bani, you go uh, uh, um, farther back. Once you pass Barahona, uh, bro, we got we got beaches over there that it'll blow your mind. Bobby, let me ask you something. So, growing up, I know how close you are with your family, how close you are with your father. You guys have a very special relationship. But take me back to when you're like 10 years old. Who were the players? Who were the teams that you and your father used to be at home watching? Who did you want to be? Who was the big poppy that admired you, that inspired you to be who you are today? True story. My father has a friend when I was a kid. I was like nine years old. That he worked in a restaurant in New York. A restaurant that Don Mattingly used to go to eat. A wow, lot. wow. You know how we got that place, the, yeah. play, the city that we play at, that we used to go to eat. Yeah the family or by yourself, that one place yeah. that you like. Yeah. Don Mattingly used to go to that place. And my father was a big Yankee fan. Mm. And every Dominican was a Yankee fan back then, yeah. to be honest with you. And Don Mattingly was one of his favorite players. And my dad told his friend, hey, when he go back to the restaurant, can you ask him to sign me something? And uh, to make a long story short, Don went back to the restaurant. Uh, my dad friend asked him, hey, there's a, there's a friend of mine back in the Dominican, big fan of yours, he would love to have something autographed by you. Madding was like, next time I come back, I bring something for him. He brought it back that he went three for four. Wow. Autograph, sent it to my dad, his friend brought it to the Dominican, and that was my very first memorabilia. Wow. That baseball bat. 
So Donnie was one of your guys. You loved Don Manning. Don, Don, I told Donnie the story. Yeah, yeah. And he absolutely remember because you don't carry a memorabilia That's into right. places all the time. That's right. The many times that you did it, you remember. Yeah. Because we don't do that often. People come with the memorabilia, yeah. you sign it, you know. He actually came to a restaurant and brought that piece for it. So, Poppy, gro growing up, you've had this incredible Hall of Fame career. I'm interested to know, and I'm going to get back to Minnesota. I'm going to talk a little bit about the Timberwolves and, and your love for Minnesota and mm -hmm. how much you loved it there. I know that. But y you've always been a great hitter. You became, like, not human once you got to Boston. But is there a, a, a hitting coach or a player that taught you something or inspired you that made you go from good to great is there one coach or one one player well <clears throat> um w while i was in minnesota kirby kirby pocket mm -hmm. was my guy mm -hmm. he used to mess around with me so much he used to uh talk to me about so many things related to baseball how to get better kirby have the one thing that I wasn't getting it from people once I really needed it. He, he used to see on me what I became to be mm. for some reason. He saw the potential in you. He saw the potential. Mm. He saw, he saw uh, 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 that I have the talent to be a, a dangerous power hitter at that level. That's why he was always, I remember I used to get to the Metrodome. Uh, I don't know if you ever went through the office. Yeah, of when, when the metro. Of so his, his, his office was on top of the door where we used to come in. And the minute I walk in, he used to come into his office. Mm -hmm. Come here, son, give me five minutes. Mm -hmm. And he we used to just like chat and talk about things and uh, 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 talk about, you know, mechanic, talk about uh, uh, your mindset. That's why when I went to, to, to Boston, I asked for his number. Mm. I wear his 34. Oh, wow. Yeah, because of him. That's, that's, that's how I got that number, the 34, because of him, because he was very special to me. I'm going to pull up the bat in about 10 minutes, and I want you to walk me through David Ortiz, the DH, first baseman, platoon guy at 25, 26 and big fucking poppy that got to Boston. That they, uh, Let's do it. First of all, give me one. Uh, let, let, uh, I want you to do that for me mm -hmm. one time. Yeah. <laughs> 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 what the fuck is that? I loved it. Listen, I loved it. Listen, I never used to pay attention <laughs> that I used to do that. Yeah. And to people start pointing at it. Yeah. yeah. Like, why do you do that? What, what is that I do? You know that when you are locked in, Ava, yeah, yeah, yeah. When you are about to, when you are thinking about what you're looking for against the guy that is in the mount, you have no idea the things that you right, do. Right. That you, I mean, like we do things that we don't realize that we are doing it into somebody point at it. Yeah. Like I don't know that I. <laughs> I don't know until people start talking about it. But you know what? I was the type of guy that I worry so much about my grip. Mm -hmm. You know, and doing that, it just kind of get my glove like settled mm -hmm. for like, okay, we're good to go. But while I was doing that, I was thinking about what my approach mm. was going to be against that guy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you're finding your mojo. Yeah, you're yeah, getting... you like, but I, that was that was my lacking moment. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And walk me through the difference of Poppy mentality Minnesota Red Sox okay when I was in Minnesota right I had the talent to be a dangerous hitter but my mechanic was a little bit all over the place plus they tried to change my approach they want me to be a land dry right over there. the shortstop hitter I, I want I mean you're the best the best with the bat and so of, we're gonna move to Studio yeah. 34 here. There you go. And Studio 13, which is a black bat. So let me tell you. Walk me through Minnesota first. Minnesota. I got to Minnesota, and my drills in Minnesota were this way. They used to put a T right here. On the field, they used to put a T right here, somewhere right here. Uh -huh. And then they want me to heat, land, dry, 
over the shortstop head. So they put the T in the outer half. Yeah. And they wanted you to hit the ball over shortstop. Over shortstop. Okay. They say that my swing was too aggressive. I was hitting 30 some homers in the minor league. Wow. And they say my swing was too aggressive. So they want my swing to be more settled. Me, now, if I had the opportunity, if I'm a hitting coach in a ball club, yeah. and a kid came to me, come to the team on my situation, wearing my shoes when I first got to Minnesota, I would not do that to him. Mm. Because I don't want to change your nature. Mm. I would do drills so you think about how you can find a way for your swing to stay longer on the strike zone, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. But I would not tell you, okay, I want you to do this, I want you to do that, you know? Everybody got his own nature mm -hmm. when it comes down to swing in the back. Mm -hmm. And that was my problem in Minnesota. I never had the freedom. If I would have taken an aggressive swing, a swing I would have TK or the hitting coach or whatever screaming at me from the dog out, hey, hey, hey! Hit the ball to left field or stay inside the ball. I asked Gene Tommy one day, he hit a ball at the Metrodome, opposite field, mm. like 30 rows up. Wow. And the very next day I went like, Tommy, I love Gene Tommy. Yeah, Gene Tommy is my guy. Hall of Famer. This is my, this guy, the Gene best. Tommy is my guy. And I asked Jim, Jim, I had a question for you. You hit that ball yesterday. You, you, you were thinking about hitting the ball that way? He was like, no. I let the ball travel deep, mm -hmm. and I tried to pull my best swing. Mm -hmm. I'm not thinking if I'm going to pull it or hit a dead center or hit up the field. I just was going to let the ball travel deep, and I'm going to get ready to put my best swing on it. Mm -hmm. And then I went to look at his number. Every time he hit the ball, he would hit over 300. Mm. Because he, put, he would put a good swing on it and the ball would find a way. Because mm -hmm. when you hit the, I don't care if you're playing to me with the chip. If I hit the ball where I want to hit it, you're not if catch. I don't hit that ball right at, it, right at you, you're not going to cut the ball. Yeah. And that's why I, 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 I thought about that and I was like, wait a minute. So when I come to Minnesota, I mean to Boston, mm -hmm. I told you what happened with my first at bat when I was trying yeah. to move it, run over. it over. Swing like a little bitch. Yeah. <laughs> the manager came to me and went like, hey, big guy, I don't want you to come here to move, run it over. I want you to bring him in. Nice. That was it. Changed everything. Changed everything. Yeah, because I went back to what I was. Yeah. The aggressive swing, the one thing I learned in Boston and I give credit to Manny Ramirez a yeah. lot. It was that I learned how to settle my mechanic. Because mm. my mechanic was a little all over the place. Mm. Sometimes I would, I would kick high, mm -hmm. higher. Mm -hmm. And then you know what happened when you Just kick settle. too high and then you come down and everything is moving. Mm -hmm. So I learned with Manny. Manny used to train how you stay in balance on the control. Everything shifted this way. Mm -hmm. So when you attack, <clears throat> And behind the ball. Behind the Boom. ball. The explosion is mm. Yes. So I learned how to control this right here. Leg kick. Yeah. yeah. Like like I was like I was like that was an X. Yeah. And I was stepping on top of. Mm. Mm. You don't want to crack it. No, you don't want to crack it. Yeah. All your weight right here. Right there. Yeah. On the there. back leg. Lined Everything up. is lined up right here. We used to work so hard on line this with the hip and this leg. Everything. And Poppy, when you were here, give me that swing. Oh, that was trouble. Boom. And then that your, was trouble. your head would never move. So no, boom, no. Boom, boom. And, 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 and the thing is, Aira, that when you line this up right here, yeah. everything is like in a slow motion. Yeah, absolutely. So with the 24, I learned how to do that. You know, and whoever played with Manny you know, that what makes him so good as a hitter it was that he used to work on his mechanic every day. Mm -hmm. He would do something to train his vision and to train his body language when it comes down to him. He wanna use your power more than what he used his. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
But in practice, he won. We used to have, have a guy named Eno, Eno Guerrero. He won Eno to throw the hardest he could. Mm. So he used hands, balance, hands, and boom, explosion. Explosion us. So, Bobby, get, get here in the batter's mm -hmm. box. Come here with the audience. Come here. All, all you fans at home. This is one of the greatest clutch hitters of all time. I would say him and Reggie Jackson really defined October as like their playhouse. I want these people at home to understand what was in Poppy's head. In Minnesota, I want you to get in the batting stands and walk me through what you were thinking, whether that's doubts or whether that's hit the ball the other way or TK in the dugout screaming at you. What were you thinking? And then we're gonna step out and I'm, I'm gonna go to 2006 mm -hmm. and seven mm -hmm. when you were going off, Perfect. your mentality. So let's start with Minnesota. Give me your head thoughts. Minnesota, first of all, I used to hit with my, with my front leg a little open this way and I used to come in because I used to feel like I used to pull the ball a lot. Mm -hmm. I always been a good pull, pull, pull hitter. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I basically want to start open so I can come in instead of just doing this. Mm -hmm. But the thing is that I was so trying to do that and then I forgot about the game plan against the guy over there. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So you're doubting yourself a little bit. I'm doubting myself. Yeah. And then I have somebody over there screaming at me, hey, you swing too hard, blah, stay through the ball, hit the ball to left field, all this stuff. No, you don't want any of it. You practice that, I want you to be telling me that when I'm hitting a 430, yeah. but a 705, let me go. It's my game. My time. That was Minnesota. In Boston. But now, now, hold on, Boston. Mm -hmm. You had some crazy fucking swag going. So, undeck circle. Hold, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so, Poppy, come over. <laughs> come over here. Come over. If you walk me through it, you wanted to get that foot down and be ready for that pitch because everything else in the plate you owned. You were right on top of it, especially at Fenway. Mm -hmm. And you felt like if you got that foot down, all you had to do is drop it. Outside became middle for you, and then you're ready for that ball inside. They couldn't get in there.